I like that you stuck the pinky out. I think that's fun. <laughs> hey, what's up? It's Jackie. I'm a professional character designer. And today I'll be reviewing two of my Patreon's artworks. Today we have a turnaround and we have a lineup. And usually when I critique my patron's work, I do a little draw over with some notes and then I send it back over email as a JPEG and a PSD file. But today, with the permission, I am recording a little more extensive review so I could put it up as a video. So I guess, I guess we'll see how that goes. Okay, so we're starting with our first critique turnaround from John Doc. Here's the character turnaround I was working on. I think it came out okay. I struggle with a lot of things like perspective, volume, and form. So we're gonna be focusing on form and really turning this in 3D volume. Now, normally for my critiques, they're not as in depth as I'm going to go, but for this video, let's go in depth. So first of all, let's check if our alignments are right. And it looks like it is. Usually for a lineup, you want more of a static pose more of a pose that the rigor, if it's going into the 2D, 3D animation, or even if it's going into 2D animation, you want the animator to really understand the form of the character, not in a pose. So usually just hands by their side. This is the most optimal pose, <laughs> but we're gonna work with what we have. So first of all, I would say work on those feet. You really want these feet to actually look like they're holding up the volume of this character and also that they're detailed and they're put in proper space. Very important for like volumetric designs. Actually, you know what? Let's back up. I'm focusing on details. One thing to really focus on is making sure that volumes are the same throughout all of the turns. For example, this arm is thicker than this arm, slightly the top of this arm, the thicker than this arm, this left arm is still thinner. This arm is even thicker than this arm. So what I tend to do if I'm stuck at how to keep the form throughout the turn is I trace it and then I drag it over and then I see if my form is accurate. So this one, the top arm is about the same and then I'd bring it over here and then I'd see that this arm is thicker. So I'd go and I'd fix it. And that's kind of what you do for all the appendages all the bits and bobs, I would take this, I'd bring it over to see if it's the same width. If it's not, I would change it. That's my little tip for you. And now I'm actually gonna start. <laughs> for things like the crotch, we don't have any indication of any overlapping. We would indicate it here. And then as you see, you have this overlapping line of the leg that goes into the hip. And that wouldn't necessarily happen on an actual person. We're gonna keep that as a straight line rather than an indentation. So you have a kneecap here, but you don't have it anywhere else. So just remember to keep that the same. To simplify this form, instead of having these shapes do that, I'm going to straighten it out. Wait, how do you draw a foot again? It doesn't have to be complicated or difficult, but just enough that you actually see that it's a foot with detail focusing on the overlapping lines. Don't willy-nilly just put overlapping lines without reason. So usually when you draw a pose, you want the neck to line up with the foot that has the weight. And that's how you know it's balanced. I'd say it's pretty balanced. Maybe I'd move it over just a little bit. I like these lines that you have that show the volume of her pants. Because it's a front turn, I'd be a little bit more straight on with your character. And, I, and I've said this before, um, but we're, we're gonna work with what we have right now. We want to make sure the volumes of these legs are the same. So I'm gonna drag this over and see if it's the same. This leg on the left here should be a lot thinner to match the leg on the right. Then we're gonna do the same here. Now these legs are a little bit more even. This neck looks a lot shorter than this neck and that's because your chin drops here, the rest of the neck has to meet it higher. So what I would do actually is I would move your whole head a little bit lower. And that just makes her feel really wobbly, like she's going to fall apart because if the appendages are really thin and all these pieces are really lanky, it just looks too breakable. So I lowered her head and let's look at the difference. It looks a little bit more accurate to real proportions. In turnarounds, you also want you know, neutral expression. The purpose of a turnaround is to give information to the animator or the modeler. 
who's making these designs. So you want their head to always be at a straight angle. Model it. Once I put it at this straight angle, you can see that the top of the head and the chin are actually not consistent throughout. And also what I like to do is I like to turn on my mirroring and this makes it so you don't have to draw more. You could draw less. This nose doesn't have a lot of detail in this front pose. It has a lot more detail in this pose right here. So we're going to try to keep it consistent and with enough information. So that's how I would make the face symmetrical, even, easy to model. And then I love that you have a little asymmetrical hairdo because it's always fun to have something a little bit unique about the character. And you had your hair like this, so we'll keep it like that. You know, if I take this arm and I block out the length and the volume of it, if I bring it over to the other arm, it is a lot shorter. Either this arm's too short or this arm's too long. So let's take a look on how we could fix this. So how I would naturally do this is that, you know, you want your elbows to line up with your belly button. Bring the elbow up a little bit. I'd lengthen this elbow up a little bit. I like that you stick the pinky out. I think that's fun. <laughs> so if she's not wearing shoes or socks, then I would add some details on where the little toes would be. And because she has five fingers, I would give her five toes as well. You want to indicate the collarbones just because that's a structural anatomical thing that you want to indicate for whoever is going to be drawing this next. Okay, so how do we take this character and we rotate it? So usually what you want to do, you know, reflected stances. So, so usually you just have the same body and you would change the thing that's asymmetrical. In this case, the hair. So let me show you an example of a turn I made that shows this pretty well. So you have a character that is basically mirrored and is really easy for you to understand, you know, how to turn this character, how to pose this character. The turnaround is the most basic part, is the first step to posing. So you're not posing her in this moment yet. She has an asymmetrical hair, so I made a seven point turn rather than like a four point turn. And because her arms are just straight at her side and her legs are straight at their side, nothing fancy, I can just flip all the drawing and just change the asymmetrical part, which is her hair. So we're doing our technique where we're taking forms that we had previously made and we're checking in on the volume. So let's fix this volume based on what we know about the front view. So for the eyes, from the side view, they're a little bit more flat. So we have a plane shift where the brow bone meets the head. We're at the eyebrows, then we can dip into the nose. And then I like the detail that we have here with the lips, how the plane goes in and then out again. So for the hair, it sits on top of the skull. So we're gonna show that as well. And in a case like this, where we're noticing that this has to go up really high, maybe I'd go back into this version and just make some adjustments so it'll look a little bit more natural. If we're doing like a 2D angle like this, we can cheat it and we can just basically use the, th the straight angle to create our side view. And maybe I would also give a little bit of detail into the ears. Now when we're doing the three quarter pose, but we're gonna take the volumes that we have and we're going to rotate it. We want it in this angle. Always making sure things line up and obviously I'm doing this really quick, really rough and it needs a lot of refinement, but it's really giving you the basic idea here. That's the thing with asymmetrical hair. You don't want the silhouette to not work. You don't want it to be all hidden behind her. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to and then you could basically, why not just copy that leg into the other leg? It's already done for you. This is your sketch phase. And then you go back on top and you do your other phase. The head is kind of a little bit too forward to the body. So this is how I would start with this turnaround. You can keep her pose like this, but adding a little bit more straightness, a little more symmetry. So then it's very clear. Okay, and moving on. Okay, so now we have a character lineup from Emma, another patron of mine. So what we want in a turnaround is we want very clear understanding of who these characters are. We want all different silhouettes, different shapes of these characters, so they really stand out. So I see that these characters are very cartoony, their proportions are quite over the top, the drawings are quite dramatic. So we're gonna try to push that as far as we can. So when we zoom out and we look at these characters, we see we have a big square character, we have a little circle character, and then we have a tall 
rectangle character. So that's what we're basically working with. Now what we can do is we can exaggerate this character to be really big. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna exaggerate how big he is. He looks nervous, I'm going to make him hunched over just a little bit more. And I love in a lineup, characters interacting, showing their personality a lot. So let's see how we can exaggerate this more. I like this character is skinny and he's got a gut. So let's, you know, exaggerate that. All these characters have really kind of short legs. So I'm gonna actually make this character have longer legs. This character, we're actually losing a little bit of volume. This is a common mistake that, you know, you have a circle character, so you draw the circle and then the legs kind of stick out. But where's the anatomy underneath? Where do the hips end and where do the legs begin? What I like to do for big round characters is you have their gut and then you also have their hips underneath. And this is just a really nice way to add a little bit of structure. And these characters' heads are at angles, which I love. This character's head is straight on. So let's add a little bit of interest of him looking up with the rest of the characters because they're interacting and he also wants to interact. So right now we have a little exaggerated version. So for this character, I absolutely love everything there is with this character. So we're exaggerating this character just a little bit. We're giving him a real gut. He's slouching over. Let's make him slouch even more. We want his proportions to feel like they work in this world. So I don't want to make his arms too long. And they've got these really oversized goofy fingers and they've got three fingers. Bold choice. These characters are quite detailed. So I'd give them five fingers. And all these characters have long sleeves. Why not give him three quarter sleeves? He's saying, hey, what about it? Why you huge man? And you know, he's nervous, but let's really make him nervous and exaggerate this cartoon element that you have. You know, his silhouette is very closed off. He's really round, but these elements are still quite flat on him. So we want everything to really curve. So if he's standing straight on, it would look like this, but to create a little bit more interest, I think that in turnarounds, you should always have a three quarter angle. So let me see what he looks like. Okay, so this looks weird. Um, he doesn't have a neck, so let's try to do that. His shoulders are coming out a little bit high. This is very much just about playing with these shapes and seeing what works and what doesn't. Always zooming out and seeing how it looks. So sometimes when I'm having trouble with something, I go in and I clarify. So this is the head. This is where the neck goes. This is where the shoulder is. Let's say the neck's a little thicker than that. The shoulder comes all the way out here. So this one would come all the way out there too the connecting pieces. Chest would be here and then his stomach would stick out like that. And this is obviously a crazy dramatic rendition of this character, but that has helped me to really see where the anatomy lies. You know, just these slight indications of anatomy, you know, really helps, doesn't take away from that cartoony. Maybe these hands are a little bigger, something like that. I think that's a great way to push this character lineup. And that's it. Okay, so let me know if you learned something or if you do things a little bit differently when you do your lineups or your turnarounds. And if you'd like a critique by me, you can join my Patreon where I have monthly spots open for portfolio reviews or character critiques. Okay, thanks for watching. Bye.